Hey, hello, and welcome to Tips for Navigating Proposal Space, Making a Stellar Proposal. Welcome to this webinar. My name is Marian Long, and I am doing this along with Linda Thomas and Kiwi Hickey. The three of us are all experienced nurse planners for the AHNA annual conferences. And nurse planners are the people who oversee the content of all the annual workshops. Um, not only the workshop, but the entire conference, including the workshops, the posters, the early morning activities, the optional activities, the keynotes, the plenary, the whole shebang with the conference theme and the educational requirements in mind. It's a big commitment to be a nurse planner and takes many hours, but it's very worthwhile and we, adore, uh, we, we appreciate doing it. However, we have noticed over the times that we have done it that there are common mistakes that submitters make that, um, that jeopardize your chance of being accepted for the proposal. We wanna help you avoid that. And we want to also help avoid hassles for future nurse planners too. So we've been wanting to do this webinar for a while and we're, we're glad we're doing it. I want to say before we start that the selection process is pretty tight. Um, in preparation for this webinar, I went back into proposal space, my own personal proposal space, and found a nice rejection letter from 2016, where it was said that out of um, 85 submissions, they could only accept 36. And that was in 2016. So just know that the process is tight and we want you to have the best chance possible. So we're going to start with a general overview of the whole process. Okay, submissions are submitted via the website called proposalspace.com. And after the deadline for submissions has passed, then that information is made available to a committee of blind reviewers, their AHNA volunteers, who use a specific rubric to quantify a score for how, how the proposals look, okay, how clear is the proposal, how well written it is, how timely it is, how interesting it is many factors like that. And by the way, the rubric is currently being updated and will soon be posted on proposal space for you all to see. That was a suggestion that the nurse planners made so that you will know exactly what your criteria is and can meet it better, okay? So, so you wanna think about your audience when you're doing your, your proposal for sure. And you also wanna think when you're doing your submission of the reviewers, keep your reviewers in mind. They're the ones that are gonna be looking, especially your abstract and your outline and deciding if it's the criteria and how it, how it should rank, okay? Um, there's a deadline for that. The, after the blind review, the results are tabulated and they're sent to the nurse planners um, on big Excel spreadsheets, like 11 by 18 inches long and maybe a couple inches thick because there's so much information here. If you're worried about paper, we also get it electronically, but there's just too much information to do it just electronically. And it takes a couple of weeks or months maybe, but the reviewers look for um, high scores, we look for reviewer comments and all the other factors about putting a great conference together. And then the selected presenters are notified and Kiwi will be talking about what happens then. But in the meantime, I'm gonna be telling you more about the process and proposal space. So people also like to know about compensation. So please know that if you're selected for a general workshop presentation, you will get a registration discount. If you're selected for a pre-conference, you'll get a revenue split depending on how many people sign up for your, for your, um, for your workshop. And posters are not compensated, but it gives you a great chance to share your information with people. And all that information about what the current compensation is will be on Facebook. Um, I'm going back a little bit. You also might notice that I'm using the phrase deadline. I'm going to use it quite a bit because deadlines are really important. I come back here. Um, deadlines are really important. We're on a timeline for this conference, and there's definitely an end date. So you want to watch the deadline dates. Go in, I recommend you go into proposal space early, and you check out everything so you're not caught off guard. And just lastly, if you have any questions about proposal space or the process, contact AHNA first. If it's a nurse planner issue, they will notify us. But generally, um, education at AHNA.org, that's Stephanie, will um, knows more than we do about how the process goes and can correct it faster. Okay, so as far as what we're looking for, the content, um, all proposals and things that end up in the conference must align, address and align with the purpose, the theme, and at least one of the object ob objectives of the conference. There is a link on proposal space to the page on the ANA website that is the conference page for each year, and that will give you all the information that you need about that. I also believe the objectives are on the proposal space well, um, website as well. The other thing that's crucial, what we are looking for, is what new information will the learner obtain and how will it change their holistic practice? Okay, the ANCC, the American Nurses Credentialing Corporation, judges that, and they're the people that allow ANA to provide CEs, judges everything and us really carefully for true educational content that's beyond basic nursing school knowledge. 
And I will say that I have been told um, that AHA has done a great job convincing ANCC that we're not just, our conference is not just us woo woo hauling at the moon or selling each other essential oils, um, that we're a very highly credible organization. And they, they do know that now. Yeah, they still always look for it. And we have to prove that our content is, um, is true educational content. We also look for a range of offerings, okay, that can be, we, we, it's important that they are evidenced or theory based. Aside from that, though, there are some, um, some presentations that are lecture with questions and answer at the end. There are some that are more creative, experiential, like doing a collage. Some are, this is how we did this or that at my practice, or this is how I do it. So we want a range of engagement levels for the audience, for sure. So you want to be aware, um, just aware of that. How does your proposal fit in to, um, to, to this category? We're also looking for a range of learning levels, OK? Um, we have all kinds of people come to the conference. There are people that come for the very first time and want to learn more. And there are others of us that have been attending for many, many years and love the more advanced cutting edge stuff. So, so sense where it is that your presentation is on that range. But know that that's what we're looking for as well. By the way, I want to say here that if you're not an AHNA member or a nurse, we still welcome your proposals. We love the interdisciplinary collaboration. I would just suggest that you go onto the on a website and explore about who we are so that you will know. Generally, our members are pretty well educated. We already know the importance of mindfulness and presence and a lot of holistic modalities. Um, and we're already drawn to the content, so you don't have to convince us about how important holism is. So just, just know that so that you can, um, you can be aware of who we are as our audience. So when you go into proposal space, I'm going to review this now. And if you want, you could pause this webinar and go on to proposalspace.com right now and, and follow along. But otherwise, just know that when you do go to proposal space review, there are other people, other organizations besides AHNA that use it. So find AHNA, find conference 2022. It's usually clearly marked in, in a list there. Um, choose that and you'll be able to create an account and also in and out as many times as you want. You can save your drafts, which is nice. You can do more than one proposal and you can do the different kinds of proposals as well. There's the regular workshops, the pre-conference day, posters, there's the research panels that are 20 minutes, all of those. So choose, uh, choose your venue and put in, um, make a nickname. And then when you come back into proposal space, you'll see that. So first thing it'll ask for will be a title. It says 10 words max. You want it to be intriguing. The only other requirement is that we ask that you don't put your, your, your name in the title because these have to go through a blind review. And then the next, um, the next thing that you'll be checking off is what your length is. For a workshop, it'll be either 60 or 90 minutes. Um, and sometimes it's possible that for the conference workshops, the planners might request a change in your time frame to fit our schedule. Like you might have noticed if you went to the virtual conference, it just happened. There were a lot of 90 minute presentations because there were a lot of very high ranked 90 minute submissions. And I think it's probably because the virtual um, framework didn't have the hard stops of dinner and lunchtime, that kind of thing. So they were able to take a 60 minute block and have more of those 90 minute once there, but in case that doesn't happen, and there are say more 90 minute proposals that are ranked a lot higher than the next 60 minute proposals, um, but we can't change the time frame. the nurse planners might ask if, if you could be flexible and either lengthen or shorten. So you might wanna, you might wanna think about that. And also this, this webinar right now is, or at least my proposal space review is more focused on what the workshop, um, workshop submission place looks like, but you can also apply for a pre-conference day. The way the pre-conference works, there's two pre-conference days, and the first one is for endorsed programs, which are things like the nurse coaching academies, things like that. The second day is the workshops for presenters for attendees, and they can be either a full day conference, which is six hours long, or a half day, which is three and a half, and there's a morning and an afternoon one of those. So, and by the way, you could apply for either or both of those, but in less than until you're able to buy locate, you can't present both a full or a half day presentation. So that's that's one of the reasons that um, that the nurse planners know who people are. That's not a blinded review so that we can just schedule them. I'll get into that. Okay, and then very important, very important um, objectives of the conference. These are based on the holistic nursing core values by and large and there's usually seven or eight of them per conference. 
but you really don't get extra brownie points for checking off a whole lot of these per se. What we really need to know is if you say that you're gonna meet an objective, how are you gonna do that? Make sure that your proposal um, supports how you're going to do that and that you really do. So if, if you'll notice, if you've done an evaluation recently, um, evaluators, the learners who, who are at workshops are asked, how did this meet the objectives? The reviewers definitely look for that. The nurse planners look for that. How are you going to achieve your objective? So don't fudge. Just make a clear connection here in your, in your submission to how you're going to meet those objectives. Next thing on the proposal space um, website is who's your intended audience? Here's where you can say it's mostly for educators, practitioners, researchers, others. You can do more than one. That's fine. Again, we just want to range for all of these different uh, people who are going to be attendees at the conference. Same with the level of content. You can, and you can do more than one of these, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. We do look for a balance of beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And just want, to, we might request a change for this if we don't have, um, if we have a whole lot of beginner things, we might say, you know, this looks like you're going deeper. Maybe you can make this intermediate and advanced instead. But just know that if your presentation is basic, call it beginner. And if it's advanced, um, have it be advanced. Okay, people don't like to come to an advanced thing and then realize that this is something they already knew. And then next is the area of nursing that it covers, practice, education, research, practice, aesthetics, personal or professional development. Um, the last time in the last real conference in Tulsa, we had advanced practice and nurse coaching tracks because we had enough submissions in those areas and there was enough interest that we could have one presentation that, um, that applied to that in each workshop block. So that might happen too, but that helps us if we know what your area of nursing is. And then now we get into uh, text boxes. And the first one is about the purpose, which is a 50 word maximum. That's only one or two sentences. And that will end up being, if you're chosen, the brief description for the guidebook. So you can think of that as your movie trailer. Okay, what's gonna make people wanna go deeper and see and, and come to your workshop? And it's good to, um, to format this around what's your focus, okay, and what do you want to accomplish? This is no longer a requirement. There's a nice phrase that was helpful um, about, uh, about saying what the knowledge gap is, okay? Um, this might be something like, many nurses are uncomfortable talking to people at end of life, okay? And then you want to say after that another sentence about how will this new knowledge be applied? or how will you address this knowledge gap? This workshop will teach you new ways to da da da. This workshop, in this workshop, we will explore this or that. So if you can say that in one or two sentences, that is, that is awesome. That's what your purpose is in your brief description. Kiwi has a nice metaphor with this. She, she says, your proposal is not just, your workshop is not just supposed to be how to bake a cake, but how will nurses use this cake in their holistic practice? So next is the abstract. And the abstract is 150 words maximum. And this is what spells out your key points, a summary of your key points. It expands on your purpose. Please don't just repeat your brief guidebook and put it in the abstract. People have done that. Um, you wanna really flesh this out for the reviewers because this is what the reviewers really see, your abstract and the outline that Linda will be talking about. So this is your best opportunity to let them know what you are going to do, what knowledge the attendees will gain and how they will apply it to their practice setting and how your objectives will be met. Okay. It's really important. ANCC looks for the, impl the impact of um, application of knowledge from us when we do, when they look at our overall, um, all the workshop presentations and all the webinar presentations and all the educational offerings that AHA makes including the conference. And then lastly, I just want to make sure to stress grammar and punctuation really do matter in these submissions. The typos are really distracting and poor grammar and formatting impact the credibility of you as the presenter. Okay, sometimes competition is really tight and you don't want to lose points for sloppiness. Sometimes presentations look like they were just thrown together at the last second and we have to wonder, wow, are they so busy? Are they going to just throw their presentation together at the last second too? Um, so, so with this, you, you want to really take some time. Um, since these are text boxes, I recommend that you do them on a Word document first. That has a spell checker and, you know, make it, make it right before you just copy and paste it into these Word boxes. Um, you might want to have an extra set of eyes look at these, use Grammarly, whatever it takes for you to make sure that your proposal is, is tight in this way before you go on. Okay, and next, Linda Thomas will continue talking about proposal space and the outline and the all-important um, conflict of interest issues. So I just want to say thanks for listening. We wish you all the best as you do your proposals. 
and good luck. Thanks. Thank you, Marion, for that general overview of how the process of submitting an abstract in proposal space goes. Hi, I'm Linda Thomas. I'm the lead nurse planner for HNA, and I'm also on your board of directors. And I want to talk to you about several of the required items that you need to include when writing your abstract for submission. Let's start with the outline. The outline is how you will convince the conference reviewers that your presentation will add to the overall conference theme. So approach your abstract through the lens of the conference themes. The outline should tell the reviewer what the focus of your presentation is going to be and the topic of your talk needs to be clearly stated and explained. It should address the professional practice gap or knowledge or simply the problem that exists in practice or it could be an area where there is an opportunity to improve the provided care that we give. Next, you will need to tell the reviewers why the audience wants to attend your session. You should include here some background information on your topic that is evidence-based or research-based and is appropriate for the level of knowledge needed for the participant who are attending, whether it's a beginner, intermediate, or advanced in order for them to be able to understand the content of your talk. Then you will need to explain how you're going to address the focus that you've identified earlier. Finally, you'll need to describe how your presentation will impact the learner outcomes or how the information gained in your presentation will contribute to nursing or healthcare. Simply, how is the participant going to be able to incorporate the knowledge or skills gained from your presentation into their practice arena? Now, if you'd like to use an education planning table to create your outline, there is here one here on the website. You can just click on the words education planning table and it'll bring it up for you. Our next area to discuss is resources and references. Your resources and references need to be cited appropriately. And this includes any photos or videos, unless they're free source and are not copyrighted. APA formatting is helpful, but it's not a requirement. If you know or are familiar with another format, you are welcome to use it. Your references do, however, need to be timely, meaning written or published within the last five to seven years. This guidance does not mean you cannot use seminal or substantial articles that are older than seven years, but it does mean that you need to have more articles than are could that are considered current than not. There is no required number of articles to support your presentation, but we highly recommend that you have at least three articles to support your work. Now, content presenters. Content presenters, you can have up to five co-presenters, but your proposal must list at least the one contact presenter who will correspond with H&A regarding the proposal on behalf of all the other contributing presenters. So the content presenter's information must be provided to AHNA. Now, let's talk about conflict of interest. But before I do, I want to talk about what ANCC is. ANCC is the American Nurses Credentialing Center, and they are the ones who oversee the quality of the educational information that various organizations provide. So basically, they're the ones who approve whether a program can receive nursing contact hours, which nurses use for their recertification of their licenses and other national certifications. These contact hours are like those that physicians, physical therapists, massage therapists, and so forth obtain from their professional organizations. So now, what is or is not conflict of interest? Conflict of interest exists when the presenter is in a position to control or influence the content of the educational activity, or they may have a financial relationship with a commercial interest or a company or products or services pertinent to the presentation's content. For example, if you present a talk on aromatherapy and you are a distributor of essential oils, then that would be a conflict of interest. In completing the application for your proposal, 
you must declare any conflict of interest. A conflict of interest is not only if you have a relationship with a company, product, or services, but also if your spouse has a relationship with any of these. Another area that is a conflict is if you are employed by a company that makes or sells products for patient use, uh, you must disclose this as a conflict of interest if the company sells or produces products related to your talk. Now, if you have a conflict of interest, then it is my job as the nurse planner to try to resolve it. And there are several ways this can be done. The nurse planner can monitor your presentation, observing for any potential bias or favoritism towards one particular company or product. In other words, the nurse planner will be looking to see if the presentation is balanced and not biased towards one specific product or company. Or it may be the resolution is to not award contact hours for the presentation. A typical example of a conflict of interest the presenters mistakenly do to is promote their books or products that they produce themselves, or they'll solicit the participants for their emails. This practice is not permitted in the educational portion of the presentation. However, after the presentation is over, if the presenter wants to share information about their book or products, they must first announce that the talk is over, that participants are free to leave, but if they would like to have more information on the presenter's topics, the presenter would like to share a book they've written or a product that they have developed. This information can go onto the final slide of your PowerPoint that is pulled up after informing the participants that the educational offering is over. You can have your contact information on the slide, anything related to your book, your business, et cetera, that is okay. But you cannot solicit outside the door of the presentation as the participants are coming in or leaving your talk. If you have a book or want to collect emails, this must be done at the exhibit hall. You can exhibit your work there and the participants must feel that they're not being pressured to sign up or buy anything during your presentation. Now, failing to abide by these contact hour rules can cause you to not be able to present for h and in the future. So simply follow the rules and you don't have anything to worry about. If you have questions about something you're planning on doing, you can always contact the h and office and they'll be more than happy to help you. Now, let's talk about some other options for involvement. This presentation covers workshops and also covers posters, both research and non-research. All submissions must go through the review process regardless of whether they have been previously approved for other conferences. So now, research versus non-research. What's the major difference between research and non-research is that it lies in the primary intent of the activity. The primary intent of research is to generate or contribute to generalizable knowledge that can inform policy or generalize outcomes beyond the specific group, entity, or institution. Research that involves human subjects requires an IRB approval. This will need to be clearly delineated on your proposal. Please remember to check yes or no on this question in the proposal space. In a research study, the researchers, like yourself, would provide a brief introduction where you detail the current literature or information about your topic that supports the need for it. You would describe your hypothesis or research question followed by the purpose of your study. And finally, you should explain your research methods and the results of the research. The primary intent of a non-research in different arenas is to prevent injury like fall preventions or improve health or improve a public health program or service. The study's intended benefits are primarily or exclusively for the participants or clients being studied or the participants community. These non-research topics can be like a clinical practice guideline, a case study, a white paper, or a position statement from a well-regarded association or organization. 
Usually the generated knowledge does not extend beyond the scope of the activity and the project activities are not experimental. Now, you will notice here that we have listed a link on proposal space to the HNA website, which will provide you more information. So please make sure you copy this down and go on to the website. Here on this website, there is a research consultation services. This is provided by the HNA Research Committee, who offers a program for those nurses who want to conduct research or who are working on a quality improvement project, but need some help or advice and guidance. If you are a new researcher who would like some assistance, the HNA Research Consultation Program is for you. Now, when you're on the website, if you'll scroll down to the bottom of the page, there are some helpful research resources. Things like a simple abstract, a sample of the abstracts for quantitative and qualitative research. Uh, there are examples that you can review to help you to better organize your submission. There is information about creating a poster or presentation and some helpful websites to find evidence-based articles to help you support the rationale for your presentation. And finally, there are some great examples of presentation topics that have been offered in the past that might give you some ideas for your talk. So now I would like to uh, turn you over to Kiwi, who's gonna talk to you about what do you do when you have been accepted. So exciting. Take it away, Kiwi. Hey there, I'm Lee Kiwi Hickey. And I'm going to be discussing the third and final part of this webinar today. Peer review selection process. Once the deadline has been reached for proposal space, all the submissions will be given to blind peer reviewers. They use a rubric for scoring each proposal. And the judging is on all the content that we are telling you about in this webinar today. After the blind peer reviewers process, all the proposals are then given to the nurse planners to make their final selections for conference. The nurse planners will be made aware of the presenters and co-presenters just for scheduling purposes. There is a limit of three proposals per presenter. So you could um, choose to present a pre-conference, a workshop and a poster or a research paper, any way, shape or fashion, just make sure that there is no more than three proposals total per presenter. Be careful if you are submitting the same proposal for a pre-conference that you are a workshop. So if you're, it's the same proposal title, same content, and you submit it for pre-conference and a workshop, even though pre-conference is longer, the attendees may not want to pay extra for that same information that they could be getting um, in the cost of the registration fee later on in the regular conference. Pre-conference, for presenters is just one day, even though it is listed as um, HNA conference, we have two days devoted to pre-conference. Day one is for endorsed programs only. So just keep in mind that even though it says two days of pre-conference, a presenter will only be able to do one, one pre-conference, either a full day or possibly two half days you will not be able to do a full day and a half day just because the first day of pre-conference is for endorsed programs. If you are not chosen, please resubmit. Doesn't mean your proposal wasn't good. It just means maybe um, we had multiple submissions on the same topic and the strongest proposal that fits the theme is going to win out over all the rest of them. So just, um, like I said, it doesn't mean it wasn't good. Please keep trying and keep resubmitting. If you are chosen, congratulations. Now the fun really begins. There is a sample contract 
uh, that is on proposal space. So you will be sent a contract to um, return in a timely fashion. There is a deadline on that. All, all conflict of interest or bias needs to be disclosed at that time. So if, say for instance, you're an aromatherapist, doesn't mean you can't teach about aromatherapy. It just means that you cannot promote yourself or your products or any um, certain product during the educational content of your presentation. Please resubmit any requested changes to AHNA with your signed contract by the deadline. Deadlines do matter. You will also be asked to submit a JPEG photo of yourself for the mobile app. Everything must be approved. So sub, um, submit any posters, PowerPoints, handouts by the deadline. These um, also need to be approved by the nurse planner. And once again, deadlines matter. Deadlines, deadlines, deadlines. Um, sometimes during this um, process, the blind, blind peer reviewers or the nurse planners may suggest to you or require changes or corrections. If so, these changes and corrections are required. Uh, if they are required, they must be resubmitted by the deadline provided. Presenters can indicate whether attendees may have your handouts or access to your PowerPoints. This is your choice. And if you choose yes, that the attendees can have access to handouts and PowerPoints, these need to be submitted and approved by um, the deadlines as well that the office, h &A office will give you. Please be respectful of the environment and in an effort to go green, AHNA will not print any PowerPoints or handouts to be given to the attendees. So bear in mind, uh, you may want to limit your handouts or format them if for efficient printing from home. So say for instance, uh, if you choose to have a really dark, background that may take a lot of ink print, and when uh, the person's printing your handout and they may want to print several handouts and take them to conference with them. Also, if you have very dense slides, this is uh, becomes difficult to read if they're printed maybe six slides to a page for a handout. So just kind of be aware of making it the best possible for our attendees for your workshop. Also, when creating your PowerPoint, be aware if you're embedding any videos in your PowerPoint. Sometimes when we get to uh, the hotel at a live onsite conference, sometimes the Wi-Fi may be a little sketchy, also, there could be a storm rolling through and it takes out the Wi-Fi momentarily. So try to foresee any problems or glitches that you may have within your PowerPoint, maybe have a YouTube backup link available. Your submitted PowerPoint will be loaded onto the h &A laptop in the room where you are presenting. So try and be there 10 to 15 minutes ahead of your scheduled presentation time. This will allow for any glitches to be worked out uh, in a smoother fashion. No USB drives or personal computers are allowed. And this goes by the strict ANCC guidelines. The nurse planners do come around and check for UBC drives in the computers prior to every single presentation. Um, so again, the PowerPoint that has been approved and reviewed by the nurse planners prior to conference is the, is the PowerPoint that you must use. If necessary, just make yourself a note and add any forgotten content to what you wanna say, just jot it down. Just be respectful and don't ask the nurse planners five minutes before your presentation for an approval of, of slides. In discussion of the AV and room needs, Return all of this uh, AV and room needs by the deadline. So before you get to that point, just imagine 
what you want to accomplish during your workshop. Is it going to require um, just people sitting in chairs? Do you want the people to move around the room? Do you want them to sit at tables and do an expressive arts, uh, interact with people in a group fashion? Just kind of bear that in mind when you're picking out your classroom um, classroom style. Presenters are usually given a choice of two standard room setups, either round tables or a classroom style. Room setup and logistics will be selected in the final contract. Bear in mind that you, even though you've chosen to have circles, the chair set up in circles, that may not be feasible depending on what the next presenter workshop looks like um, that follows you. So the, the office does everything that they can to make sure you get your first choice of a room setup, but in all cases, that's not 100% guaranteed. The, the room format once chosen may not be changed at the last minute. Every requested change to a conference room costs money to flip the room into a different setup. H&A is also charged for those room setups that were changed by a presenter on their own and had to be reassembled for the next speaker. The room must look like uh, it did when you started your presentation. When you walked into the room, the room has to be set up the exact same way when you leave. For, be courteous of the next person speaking. H&A provides standard AV equipment, one microphone, laptop, and projection screen per session. AV specialists are available to support presenters throughout the conference. Just bear in mind, extra microphones cost money. Safe meeting guidelines are moving targets these days. Sometimes things are beyond our control. h and does not supply materials for the presentation. For example, uh, if you want the uh, present your workshop to have colored pencils, special paper, mixing bowls, herbs, oils, all the materials required to do your presentation are your responsibility, the responsibility of the presenter. Please note these materials must also be approved by the conference nurse planners. Phew, we made it. Congratulations if you've been selected to be a presenter in the H&A conference. We do want your proposals. We're here to help you. If you find any um, difficulty, reach out to the office at any given time. There are um, sample proposals um, on the AHNA website. If you have difficulty finding those, please reach out to the office and bear in mind deadlines, 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 they do matter. So we wish you all the best. Thank you for watching this webinar. Have a good day.